Welcome back my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're gonna be talking about gas. Okay, so we have this data table where we have time measured in seconds, and then we have a function with respect to time in gallons per second. And we're being told that a customer at a gas station is pumping gasoline into a gas tank. The rate of flow of gasoline is modeled by some differentiable function f, where f of t is measured in gallons per second, and t is measured in seconds since the pumping began. Selected values of f of t are given in the table. Our first problem asks us to use the correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral from 60 to 135 of f of t dt in the context of the problem. And then we want to use a right Riemann sum with the three sub intervals as listed to approximate the value of that interval. Let's sort of break down this problem. You can kind of think of this as it has two steps. The first step is interpret the meaning, and then the second step is to actually to approximate the value. So let's go ahead and interpret the meaning first. Now when we think integrals, we want to think area under curve. If f of t is represented in gallons per second, then the integral of that is going to be just gallons. Okay. So instead of getting the rate of flow of gasoline, what we're just going to get is gasoline. So since we're starting our integral at t equals 60 seconds, we're going from 60 to 135 seconds. I would say that the area under the curve of this function, which represents the rate of flow of gasoline, is going to be actually how many gallons of gas have been pumped into the gas tank from time equals 60 to time equals 135. So writing that out, it'll be 60 to 135 f of t dt represents the amount of gas in gallons that has been pumped into the gas tank between 60 seconds and 135 seconds since the gas started pumping. So I wrote this kind of verbosely just to make sure that that dreaded college board would understand each of my statements. But the most important thing that you would put here is the fact that it's between 60 seconds and 135 seconds, and it's the amount of gas in gallons, okay? It's the area under the curve. Where the curve was a rate, the area under the curve is going to be just gallons, okay? Then the second part of this problem says to use a right Riemann sum with these three subintervals to approximate the value of this integral that we were just talking about. So I went ahead and I, I graphed each of the points in the table within this graph. This is, you know, probably not with the curve I mean, if I were to connect the dots, I don't know, maybe it would look something like this. This is 100% just for the purposes of illustrating what I'm doing with this right Riemann sum. This is not what the curve looks like probably, but this is just so you can see what I'm doing here with these rectangles. So don't freak out. Don't be like, oh my God, how did you know what the curve looked like? You didn't even have the actual function. Well, you know what? It's not, it's not what the real curve looks like probably, okay? Notice that we're going to be approximating the area of the curve from 60 to 135. So what that looks like is, so this is at t equals 60, and then this one is at t equals 135. So if we put bars down like this, we're essentially trying to approximate this area here, this area under the curve, the number of gallons. So, so with our Riemann sums, what we do is we separate them out into these rectangles, so you separate them out into these rectangles. And since we're doing a right Riemann sum, what that means is the height of each of these rectangles is going to be based on the right value. All right, let me repeat that one more time. The right Riemann sum's height is going to be based on the right value of each of the rectangles, okay? So for this first rectangle, which is going to be the area from 60 to 90, all right, so from 60 to 90, we are going to be using f of 90 as our height, f of 90 as our height, as opposed to f of 60. If we had done f of 60, so let me show you what that would look like. If we had done, if our rectangle had looked like this, then we would have been doing a left Riemann sum. So here's what our 
curve approximation would have been like if we were using a left Riemann sum. But we are not doing that. We are doing a right Riemann sum. And also notice that I'm only doing these three sub intervals that were mentioned in the problem. So from 60 to 90, that's this rectangle here. From 90 to 120, that's this rectangle here. And then from 120 to 135, that's this rectangle here. It didn't ask me for the area of the curve from 0 to 150. That would have been this whole thing over here. It just asked me from 60 to 135. So make sure you're being really close with your bounds here. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and start writing this out. So the integral from 60 to 135 of f of t dt is equal to... So how do we find the area of a rectangle? Well, we take its base, we multiply it by its height. So the height for this, since we're using the right Riemann sum, is going to be f of 90. What is f of 90? f of 90 is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 times our base. Our base is going to be the difference between 90 and 60. So that's going to be 30. So that's our first rectangle. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on to our next rectangle. What is the height of our next rectangle? It's going to be f of 120, right? Right Riemann sum. f of 120 is 0.1. So we're going to do 0.1 times our base, which is going to be the difference from 120 to 90. So here, this is the base that I'm talking about. So that is another 30. All right, now moving on to our final subinterval. Our height is going to be f of 135. Okay, right Riemann sum, so our height is going to be 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and now you might be tempted to just sort of autopilot and say multiply that by 30 because the heights or the widths of all the rectangles up until this point have been 30, but you actually will notice that it is not 30. So the difference between 120 and 135, so this width here, is actually going to be 15. So that's what we're going to be multiplying it by, 15. So those are our three sub-intervals that we wanted to add up using the right Riemann sum. So let's see what we end up getting. This is a calculator problem, so please don't waste your time multiplying this stuff out. You should get that this is 8.25, and make sure that you put your units in. Okay, so this should be in gallons. 8.25 gallons. So nice job. Give yourself a little pat on the back. We made a right Riemann sum. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. So this problem says, must there exist a value of C for C is between 60 and 120, such that F prime of C is equal to zero? Justify your answer. This setup of must there exist a value of C, where C is between two values within the data table should give off alarm bells here. And what should those alarm bells be saying? They should be saying, hey, think about your friend, the mean value theorem mean value theorem will be very helpful for you here. So the mean value theorem basically says that if f of x is continuous on a, b, and differentiable on a, b, then there has to be a c such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So before we can actually apply the mean value theorem, we need to establish two things. The first is that it's continuous. The second is that it's differentiable. Okay, well, there's nothing within problem B that says either of those things. So let's go ahead and scroll back up to the original problem statement and see if there's anything that could help us out here. Yeah, exactly. So it says the rate of flow of gasoline is modeled by a differentiable function f. So if a function is differentiable, that assumes that it is also continuous. This is just a property that you need to know. So because f of t is differentiable, it must also be continu continuous. So we've checked off our two conditions here. So that means that we can go ahead and apply our mean value theorem. So what does our mean value theorem says? It says f prime of c, f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a. So we're going to set our 60 to be our a and our 120 to be our b so f of 120 minus f of 60 over 120 minus 60 so what does this equal what is f of 120 equal it's that 0 0.1 what is f of 60 equal also that 0 0.1 
all over 60, so we get 0 over 60, which ends up being 0. You might notice that the problem asked us, let me erase this part here, you might notice that the problem asked us, must there exist a value of c such that f prime of c is equal to 0 between 60 and 120? And the answer is yes. Yes, there must be one. So yes, by the mean value theorem, there must exist a c for 60, for c is between 60 and 120, such that f prime of c is equal to 0. That's it. We did the math up here. We explained that the function was both differentiable and continuous, which are the two factors that we need. And then we wrote out our answer. Let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. It says the rate of flow of gasoline in gallons per second can also be modeled by g of t, where it's this semi-complicated function for t is between 0 and 150. Using this model, find the average rate of flow of gasoline over the time interval 0 to 150. Show the setup for your calculations. So with this problem, if you see average rate of flow, I want you to think, okay, what is the average value of g of t? So, so average value, and think average value function. So think 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of t dt. We want to be finding the average rate of flow of gasoline, so we're going to be plugging in g of t here. Okay, We know that our a is going to be 0 and our b is going to be 150. So let's go ahead and plug all those things in. So we get 1 over 150 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 150 of g of t dt, and then you could just, I was feeling a little lazy to write it all out, but you would just plug all of this into your calculator. Just use that calculator of yours, and you should get 0 0.096 gallons per second. How did I know that this was going to be in gallons per second? Well, we're still looking at a rate of flow. We're looking at the average rate of flow from time equals 0 to time equals 150, but it is still a rate of flow. So it's going to be in gallons per second. That is our answer for part B. Moving on to part D, it says, using the model G defined in part C, find the value of G prime of 140. Interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. We have our G, it's repeated from the last problem. Go ahead and just plug that into your calculator. Find the derivative of g of t at time equals 140, and you should get that it is minus 0 0.0049. So now we need to interpret the meaning of the answer. So let's go ahead and just take a step back from the um, context of the problem and think about what we just did. So we just did a derivative, okay? If this was the rate of flow of gasoline, we just did the derivative of that. So we did, we found the rate of the rate of the flow of gasoline. Okay. And notice that our rate of the rate is, an, is negative. So it's decreasing. So we can write this out as at time at t equals 140 seconds after the gasoline has started pumping the rate of flow of gasoline is decreasing all right is decreasing and how much is it decreasing is decreasing at a rate of 0.0049 gallons per second per second okay so you need those two seconds how do i know that this was the unit well the unit for g of t was gallons per second if the integral of g of t would have been in gallons then g of t is in gallons per second, and g prime of t is going to be in gallons per second per second. 
Also make sure to not include that negative sign here because of the way we're structuring our sentence, we're saying it's decreasing. You can kind of think of the decreasing as it's already filling in for the negative sign here. If you said it was decreasing at a rate of negative 0.049 gallons per second, per second what you'd be saying is it's actually increasing. Okay, so make sure you do not include your negative sign here. So hopefully that helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.